Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need help navigating this down move, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. All right, let's see who's coming in on the stream today. Let's uh, let's talk to the people. Let's take a laid back Friday approach. Okay, Taz is here first. Flip Burger, Logan. All right, welcome. All right, <clears throat> San Paulo, Brazil, Liverpool, Kentucky loves you. Appreciate that. All right, somebody's giving a shout out to Notorious on my Twitter. Love you. Thank you. Mexico, Seattle, Denmark, Czech Republic. All right. Stratford, UK. Everybody tuning in today. British Columbia, Canada, Nigeria, Algeria, India, up late at night. We appreciate that. New Zealand, also probably up late at night. We have Panama, Togo, Joyzy, where I'm from, Greece. Alberta, Canada, Atlanta, more people coming in from India. Oh, and don't forget Wisconsin, go pack, right? Let's see, Orlando, Florida, Oklahoma, Boomer, Sooner, okay? We've got Bournemouth, UK, Morocco, okay? And don't forget Austin, Texas, along with our friends from Cincinnati and London, England. Natty says, time to buy BTC. What a great question. Let's dive into the market update. and Let's talk about where we think the levels are where you would like want to make an investment, right? In other words, you either want to make a trade and get like a big 10% rally, right? So you want to make sure the sellers are all exhausted before that happens, right? And then what I can do is share some things with you about long-term forecasting. Like, okay, if this is a bear market, where can it go? Sort of similar to what Benjamin Cohn does when he talks about, say, the 200-week moving average in Bitcoin and why that would be, you know, or has historically been such a good buy. Let's jump in to your market update. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk levels and I'm going to talk about how to understand what's happened, right? You got war, you got the Fed, you got equity shitting the bed. I want to see if I can just literally just talk to you and give you some context, try to help you make the best decisions possible. Now, on a much lighter note, we have token metrics giving you 30% off with the coupon LOVE30, that goes out until the 21st. Now, you may be wondering, Bill, the market is getting wrecked. Why am I signing up for crypto research? Well, there's lots of reasons. The biggest reason is the All Exchange Index, where our artificial intelligence system goes through all the best coins and finds all the best coins and puts them in a group. And wouldn't you know that as of two days ago, the all exchange index said, get out of the market. I saw this at 545, right? The day this thing went down and I'm like, oh shit, the live stream's not for another six hours, right? Now this morning, it was also in cash. So if you look at all this red ink on your screen, as long as RAI is saying out, 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 all right, this this dump can continue. 
right? The best indicator as to whether or not we're going to stop dumping or start bouncing, right? It's probably the all exchange index. So if you got wrecked, take the amount of money you lost and then look at, gee, how much could I have saved with a token metric subscription? So think about it. Also, we've got the moon awards, right? We've got things from, you know, the best Twitter account, the best wallet. So vote for the 2022 moon awards. The link is in the description below. All right. Now let's kick in, let's kick into some charts, right? Uh, we have David from Waco, North Carolina is in the house. We have Dubai. Ken says no one mentions Ave, but I'll write it down and try to look at it because I know we're going to have all kinds of requests today, right? Switzerland is here. We appreciate you, right? More people from Ohio, Wembley, all, all these people rocking the live stream today. Spain in the house. Okay, let's look at total crypto market cap excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. In other words, altcoins. It's total three, three on TradingView. We've been talking about this. There's a head and shoulders top, right? <clears throat> one minute, this is a bearish formation. So one minute, the bearish formation was bearish. And then we got that huge fake out rally over the last two weeks, including you know, the brutal, the brutal trade on February 15th that got everybody. All right. So one minute, the bearish formation wasn't bearish anymore. And now it is. So if there's a shitty close today, right, this pattern is going to be confirmed. So that means you could lose up to $400 billion in altcoin market cap. Now, how would I look at this? I would say, if you're in projects and you don't believe in the projects, then you need to start managing risk. Also, you also need to consider that layer ones may be over owned. Like Solana never bounced. ETH unbelievably is getting hammered, which is wackadoo considering I thought that, you know, 2850 would be support and ETH might gravitate back and rest towards 3000. So if they're hitting ETH, which has become like the network of NFTs, my God, what are they going to do to everything else? So this is a risk management question at this point. It's not just a technical analysis question. Now let's look at the Bitcoin ETF, right? Not a lot of price action, but it can be an indication of where support is. Because I still think equity market players, as the market drops, may turn and start buying Bitcoin as, the, as Bitcoin goes down. Right now, for you or me, we go, oh my God, you know, there's a big difference between 45K Bitcoin and 35K Bitcoin. Right. But in the equities world, when you're allocating 1% of your portfolio, you know, they may just be like, well, you know, I'll, I'll start to buy a dip. So the big question is, how much lower would Bitcoin have to go where it would be juicy for equity market investors to buy the Bitcoin ETF? So let's take a look at the chart, right? This particular chart system uses the work of Tom DeMarc, right? The Bitcoin ETF, when I put this chart together, is around 25. And I'm showing there's a big old gap and support near 22. So that's roughly 10% below where Bitcoin is right now. So if there's a, you know, Black Monday or a total weekend shit show in crypto because everyone's afraid of equities, okay, the Bitcoin ETF could go down 10%. Now for us in crypto, 10% doesn't mean much, but if crypto was down 10%, right? That, that might be roughly 34 K seems somewhat reasonable, right? Uh, not exact calculation, but we'll go more into why that level is important later. Now this formation was actually brought to my attention, uh, sort of accidentally when I saw a chart published 
by a macro researcher at Fidelity. And I would imagine, I mean, I just, I just talked to Forbes about this in an email. So I guess that this chart's going to be everywhere if it isn't already. So there's a head and shoulders top in Bitcoin, just like there is in altcoins, except this one's very clear, right? It, you know, Bitcoin went down, it went to 36K, and then it bounced up to 45 twice, which was right where the neckline is. So the way a head and shoulders top works goes something like this. Bulls push it up, then bears push it down. And then bulls go, oh, I got you this time. And they make a new high. And then bears go, oh no, we're going to push it down. And then the bulls get really mad. They're like, okay, I'm sick of you. Okay, we're taking this up. But then the bulls, the bears rather, counterattack big. And bulls go, oh no, right? And then it's like down, up, down is how this formation works. So, you know, this formation is so famous it's actually on like the legacy securities exam. It's like the only technical analysis question. Now I got all kinds of quant indicators and stuff, but the fact of the matter is patterns like this can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. All right, now let's go to the Bitcoin weekly chart to look at some stuff where support might be. I've got a lot of new outside the box indicators using Fibonacci retracement analysis. I'm sorry, Fibonacci extension analysis. You've seen me use this analysis before when altcoins were mooning, all right? This is the type of analysis that I literally just got this morning that's gonna help us figure out like, all right, where do I wanna play a bounce? Like if I can only be long, where's the best support for a bounce? And then there's this idea of, you know, where, where is the market going to be, I don't know, in six months? So let me just go back to the prior chart and just note one thing. So this head and shoulders top, it took 150 days to form, right? That, that left shoulder was from that high at 52K back in September. So the way theory works with head and shoulders is, if it took 150 days to make the formation, it could take 150 days for it to play out to the target, right? So, I mean, that means we're talking roughly six months. So for this thing to fully play out, you could be looking at, you know, basically a six-month decline featuring heavy bounces. Now, of course, I'd love to be wrong and have it go above 45K, but that may not happen because of what's going on in stocks more on that later. So using these very unique Fibonacci extension moves, right? Where we're almost using, I'm almost using Elliott wave to draw the lines. I'm coming up with three points, right? 34K was the level of where the last down move of the last flush out occurred. So if you go back to July, the final puke, the final red candle, the high of that candle was 34K, all right? So if you get a 10% decline in Bitcoin, remember that ETF chart, right? You get a 10% decline in Bitcoin or something in that neighborhood, it probably means a return to where Bitcoin was puking from, the final puke occurred back in July. It makes sense, right? In other words, <clears throat> The last final puke ended and the new puke could end at that level as well. So you could get a trading bounce, you know, like if there's a crash, you could get a trading bounce off 34K. So if you were short, that might be a level where you might cover if you're hedging, not investment advice. Longer term, we're looking at kind of like two points. 28K is one level and 22K is another. So over the weekend, everyone's going to be like, oh my God, it's going to 15K or oh my God, it's going to zero. You're going to hear all this bullshit, all right? Realistically speaking, if there is a six month bear market, something where it gets close to the 200 week moving average, which is at 20K seems I don't know. It's feasible. You just have to face the fact. I mean, Benjamin Cohen's been talking about it, you know, for a long time that 
he didn't know whether or not you were going to get to buy Bitcoin down at that level. Okay, well, our work shows that, you know, if there is this, this decline, right, if the head and shoulders plays out, you know, you're probably looking at, say, 28K. So you have to sort of put in your mind, you have to say to yourself, all right, you know, if Bitcoin does go down there, you know, what am I going to do with my portfolio now? Right? So everyone's like, you know, rather than getting hysterically bearish or smoking hopium, just say to yourself, if Bitcoin went to 28K, how can I position myself so that I don't get wrecked? Right? Or if Bitcoin goes to 34K, how can I maybe play a trading bounce, right? And then get out and then have more capital to potentially get long in six months. So these are some things to think about. Now let's look at Ethereum. Unfortunately, Ethereum looks like it did back when it topped in November, right? I'm looking at these waving moving average lines. Uh, they're an indicator from Bill Williams. They're actually on TradingView. I believe it's called the alligator, right? So these wavy moving average lines uh, work for, it's nice for me because I don't have to guess what the moving average of the day is. It's kind of cool, right? And back in November, ETH tried to go above these moving average lines a couple times and then failed. And once it failed for the third time, you know, that was kind of the end. Now, Again, I find it shocking that ETH was able to get this far away from 3,000, but there's no denying the fact that ETH is now below all these moving average lines and it looks just like early December. So that sucks, but that's what the chart shows as of now. Now, let's talk about what's really, frankly, pissing me off these days is the fact that crypto is caught in this equities vortex. In other words, if you're asking yourself, gee, Bill, you're bullish all the time. You know, why would you even talk about Bitcoin going down like 10%, 28%? Well, because I have to be intellectually honest. And I think the biggest risk facing crypto right now is how stocks are going to handle war and rate hikes. By the way, speaking of geopolitical tensions, if you're in crypto and you're lost, right, as to like, you're like, God almighty, how, how do I follow and track all this war news without listening to like, you know, right-wing news, left-wing news? It's like, I just want the facts. I just want an indicator that lets me know what the hell's going on. And I have that for you, so don't go anywhere. But in terms of what's pissing me off, it's what's going on in stocks. So here's Kathy Woods, right? She's smart, right? She's wealthy. She owns the ARK investment firm that makes, you know, ETFs that invest in highly speculative companies. She invests basically in the altcoins of the stock market. And she, the other day said, you know, her innovation stocks are way undervalued and recent fund losses are temporary. This, like the crypto ads in the Super Bowl, feel like the contrarian kiss of death. Because look at what's happening to ARK Innovation, right? Once upon a time, I said this fund was like a bowling ball falling out of a window, okay? Right? So this is not labeled right. This is the weekly chart of ARK, not the daily. That black line is the 200-week moving average. I got a little bit too cute with this and thought that there might be a short squeeze. And Mr. Market took me to school because right now this does look like bowling ball falling out of a window. And ARC is below its 200 week moving average. So just think about it, right? The 200 week moving average in Bitcoin is at like 20K, right? The altcoins of the stock market are already below its 20K, right? I mean, this. This could get totally destroyed. Let's look at S&P. This is SPY. It's the ETF that follows the S&P 500. Right now, there's support at 436. And as you can see, SPY is knifing through that support. Now, there was huge volatility near this level 
during the January lows, but it eventually recovered. My fear is, is that equities are going to fall apart Friday and Monday and that everybody might freak out over the weekend and beat up on crypto to try and hedge a debacle in equities, right? So this is being filmed midday Friday. So if you watch this later, you don't see a bounce in equities heading into the close or worse, equities shit the bed into the close, right? That's a warning sign, right? That means, okay, you know, I love crypto and I think, you know, Avalanche at 76 is an awesome deal. It, it, it is, it is an awesome deal. But if you look at some of the altcoin charts and you look at what's going on in equities, I mean, folks, the stock market is two and a half times the size of the economy in the United States. That means take all the stuff we produce and give me a dollar number, right? And then take a look at the stock market and give me a dollar number as to what that's worth. The stock market is worth two and a half times the stuff we produce. And you're sitting there going, wait a minute. I thought the stock market was supposed to reflect the value of what we produce. Yeah. Absolutely. That's before the Fed filled up the system with a combination of steroids and sugar, right? What happens if war and rate hikes cause the stock market to blow up? Is that crypto's fault? No. Do we have to deal with it for the moment? Yes. Yes. Right? So if the stock market sucks, crypto is going to get caught in this wave, right? It's not crypto. It's not crypto's problem. It's the stock market destroying value and speculative assets. And then crypto kind of, because crypto moves quickly, crypto moves faster. In other words, crypto is like, oh my God, you know, the 800 pound gorilla just fell over. Shit. That's what's happening. Okay. Let's look at the bond market. Now this, we got right and we presented this, that there was a bottom forming in bonds. So this is a long bond ETF, TLT for anybody who plays pinball. That means tilt, right? Which means, wow, because long bonds can be very volatile. This is a 30 year or 20 year long bond ETF. Long bonds, as they're called, are less sensitive to the Fed. They're sensitive to the Fed, but long bonds can have a mind of their own, okay? So you can't have short-term rates going up and the Fed tightening and long-term interest rates can do their own thing. So that's why I brought this chart up, okay? Because long-term bonds based on TLT, okay, these 13s and 9s that you see on the chart in the bottom right, that comes from Tom DeMar from what's called sequential. It's a complicated calculation, but as you can see, why they make the big number 13 and the big number nine, right? That's kind of the color by numbers approach to let people know that, hey, this could be a bottom or a top. And as you can see, you had a whole bunch of 13 and nine signals and lo and behold, bonds were going up. And you're like, wait a minute. I thought bonds should go down because interest rates were going up, right? Rates up, bonds down. How come it's bonds up, rates down when the Fed's hiking rates? Well, here's your answer, okay? Bonds are going up because everybody's afraid of what? Hmm. A huge problem in stocks. This happened in 1987, right? Bonds and interest rates went up and up and up. Bonds went down and down and down. And then equities cracked. I put something on my Twitter, crypto underscore noble. Okay. I retweeted a guy who was himself retweeted by a former Fed governor showing the St. Louis Fed has an indicator, right? Showing stock market uncertainty is as high as it was back in 1987. So an unusual measurement of stock market fear. Now I didn't include it here, right? Because it's interesting that the guy was able to update the data when no one else seemed to, but it was retweeted by a former Fed governor. So let's review. Stocks 
bubble, right? Stocks, hubris, right? Stocks, you know, in trouble, bond market going up because of all of the above, okay? This affects crypto. As long as TLT is going up, you got to worry about crypto, right? In other words, when they're flocking to safety, there's something wrong. A positive note, or is it, that the Ukraine just legalized Bitcoin. Now you're like, wow, that's an interesting move. Why did they do that? Well, because according to geopolitical futures, right? And my favorite geopolitical news site based in Austin, Texas, okay? The Ukraine as a whole was basically cyber attacked two days ago, right? So I'm sitting at my desk and I saw our all exchange index go to cash. As I'm reading the update from geopolitical futures going, oh yeah, they just hacked the Ukraine banking system. So it scared the hell out of me to see these guys go, wait a minute, we need to encourage everybody to go to Bitcoin as soon as possible in case you go to the ATM and all you're looking at is a blank screen, right? So it's good for Bitcoin. It's good for crypto. It's good that humanity has somewhere to turn, right? It means that if Bitcoin goes down, there will be demand for crypto. There will be. There will be bounces in crypto. I still think there's going to be a bounce at the end of the month. I just wasn't counting on this whole apocalypse trade. But that's okay because I've retooled my methods. I'm learning and adapting. You can watch me live on TV, figure this out because I'm in the same boat you are. All right? Bottom line is the Ukraine is like, hey, you better get some crypto because we don't know what's going to happen to your bank account if this continues. Now, that's not directly stated, but it seems obvious to me. Now, earlier, I promised that I would give crypto traders a way to try to figure out the geopolitical situation. In other words, I don't want to read the news. I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, they're moving troops in. They're moving troops out. I don't want to read propaganda. All right. So here's an idea. A tweet from Ren Mac, Renaissance Macro Research says, the last line, it's, it's in Biden's interest to overstate the Russia-Ukraine issue, okay? It's the Ukraine's prime minister's interest to understate the threat, and it's Putin's interest to keep the threat high and relevant, all right? So how do you figure it out? If these guys continue to push the envelope, the ultimate indicator is oil futures. Here's why. Russia exports a lot of oil. The United States, because it's going green politically, right, is actually buying more oil from Russia than they have been in a long time. So if there are sanctions or conflict, okay, oil is going to be in short supply. So as oil goes up, crypto goes down. It's pretty much that simple, right? Oil is on top of a moving average around 91. So if you just don't want to read the news and you just sit there and you watch oil. So if oil goes down $4, you'd be like, oh, well, great. Maybe it's time to cover shorts and get long. But if you start seeing oil creeping up or God forbid, you see a big rally towards a fib number at 107, well, then you know there's a problem because who's going to know about the problem in Ukraine first? Me, you, or somebody who trades oil for an oil company. In other words, you don't think that big, big, big players don't have people on the ground observing what's going on over there. They don't just sit behind the screen and read the internet. They know what's going on. So who in the market knows what's really going to happen over there or what is happening over there? It's the oil traders. So for crypto, and stocks, right, as scary as it is, you want to pay attention to oil. Even if oil's like a little bit green, okay, you have to be careful from this point out. Because if oil, you know, starts really rocketing up, that's bad. Now, if oil happens to go down, because stocks go down, that, that can happen. Because they're both tied to economic growth. That might be an indication that, hey, maybe we need to pay attention to support in crypto. So if you don't want to read the news, watch oil. 
Now, let's take one final look at equities before we just take this conversational because I want to see if I can get you as much help as I can. So this is the 90-minute chart of SPY of equities. So there are 13 bottoming signals that at the moment, SPY is ignoring. That's not good. However, we're approaching a possible nine bottom as well. So here's my bottom line to you. If stocks bounce into the close, you don't have to freak out in crypto. If stocks just totally puke and ignore all these signals, okay, then I don't know, you know something's wrong and there could be a bigger puke, right? I don't want to get all bearish after it's been down for two days, but I want to be realistic about stocks and I want to give you the levels that you need and the things to look at when I'm not on the air that can help you. And that is your market update. All right. So let's take a look at what we got going on in the stream. Flipburger says, help Bill out and hit the like button. Thank you. Please hit the like button. If you're a crypto trader and you need legacy information and support levels, hit the like button. All right. We've got Turkmenistan in the house, Arizona. All right. Cheers from Cyprus. Okay. Let's read this comment. In a market full of new traders, how would you get them to forfeit their blank, which will be the most bullish blank ever? Okay. I, I believe he's saying maybe a macro pattern anyone can understand institutions are in now. So yes, right? Frequently lows are made when retail traders puke out their positions. I actually think that's going to happen in equities. It's probably already happened in crypto, particularly after the Super Bowl. Okay. Aiken says, is a Fed rate hike of 1% to 2% going to happen? Folks, the Fed is going to hike rates. If you want my off-the-cuff opinion, I think the biggest risk for war is the Fed will hike rates in March for sure. Don't forget the inflation number is on the 10th of March. So the fear trade over that will likely begin at the end of February. That's a guess, right? So after the Fed hikes rates, that's Putin's opportunity to start real trouble. So that's why I'm telling you, follow the bond market, follow oil, follow stocks, and don't get wrecked because 150 days from now, we want to be here to get super long. All right, let's see what else we got. Don't we have a ton of oil in reserves? Also get oil from our friends in Saudi Arabia. That's from Megan. Yes, unfortunately, we shut down the Keystone Pipeline in the United States. So in order to appear you know, environmentally friendly, we decided to buy more oil from overseas, including Russia. Also, uh, oil companies, because of you know, the pandemic in 2020, and because of the green initiatives, the world is not investing as much in oil infrastructure as they were. So that means any disruption to the supply can make prices go up. That's why oil's at $90. Oil's not at $90 because of just regular old inflation. Things don't go up by themselves, right? Oil's up because people are afraid of a disruption in oil supply, okay? 20K by May, that's from Steven, okay? How would you DCA in Bitcoin from here? Interesting, okay? So I think the DCA process would start at 34K, right? You would start there, see if you get a rally. Then, you know, if it doesn't work out, you can take some quick profits. I would say the ultimate DCA strategy would start at 28K because that was that long-term weekly level. So if you waited this long and you think they're going to blow it out, you're going to have sell in May and go away and all that stuff that we have talked about, right? Then DCA would probably start at 28, right? A trading buy at 34 uh, seems possible, all right? Okay, hello from Croatia, right? So we have a request for sand, all right? And let's see what else we got here. 
Somebody was asking, Bill, what can we learn from the invasions of Georgia and Crimea in terms of the impact on the market? Good question. So normally, markets don't care about war, honestly. I mean, war is a human tragedy, right? But normally, the stock market doesn't take war seriously, right? You know, unless it's in a G3 country. In this particular case, you've got this terrible triple threat, right? You've got inflation. You've got the Fed that can't stop the inflation without blowing up the stock market. So they've got a choice. They can either stop inflation by raising rates six or seven times, or they can blow up the stock market. Or let me rephrase that. If they raise rates six or seven times to stop inflation, they will blow up the stock market, right? And Vladimir Putin knows that, right? He's putting pressure, right? He doesn't want to shoot at the United States. He wants the stock market to go down because that's how you hurt the United States the most. So, you know, when you look at these past invasions, normally the stock market doesn't care. In this case, the toxic combination of inflation, bubbles, and war, right? Now the stock market cares. Whereas these other incidents, frankly, were just things that, you know, Mr. Putin was just doing whatever he needed to do to protect his country, right? This is not a politics show, but the market cares, right? Because of the weirdness with the Fed situation and the disruptive effect of higher oil. All right. So let's, right. So somebody says, I'm sure Michael Saylor wants Bitcoin at a discount as much as we do, right? Little, little note on that. I understand the DCA strategy. I totally respect long-term investors. Equities people are going to buy Bitcoin, you know, but just be careful what you wish for in terms of how markets can go down. Because if, if any of this work is right, right, if any of these theories that you're, you're going to be seeing, this is going to be everywhere over the weekend, right? right? If stuff's right, I know you want to buy it lower, but be careful about cheering for a down move. Because sometimes down moves can be nasty, 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 right? People in the bull market would be like, oh, I can't wait for the bear market so I can buy, right? And I'm sure all those people by now are wrecked. So let's go, let's go to the, let's go to, let's go to the charts and let's see if we can help people. And we're looking at Sand, Ave, UOS, and API3. And then somebody just came in and asked for BNB. So let's, let's try to get people as much help as we can. Okay, so that's the total three chart. I always like to see what the market's doing while I'm talking. So thank God the market is like coming back. That's good, all right? Maybe Bitcoin's coming back, but ETH isn't, WTF, okay? All right, let's take a look. Let's start with Ave. Okay, so this is the daily chart of Ave. Now, here's the good news. Sometimes when you get these little blue bars, they're called squat bars, something I'm experimenting with. Uh, the theory is that, you know, they can be within three to five days of a bottom, right? Kind of like this squat bar over here. Okay, those two candles to me look similar, right? So you got the squat bar in Ave and then it puked for like four days down here and then you got a trading bounce, right? So, you know, I had drawn a trend line here in Ave, right? So maybe the worst case scenario is 130, all right? Maybe Ave comes back. I think in all these coins, you know, you at least have to be psychologically ready for a final heave. You kind of hope that this is it because that's also possible, right? People just like, oh, you know, I just puke everything out and I'm exhausted. 
So let's take a look at a tactical view and see if I can get you anything, you know, more precise. Okay, so in the short term, it looks like there's some decent support at 145. Okay, so if, if, if things calm down, 145, 146 is good support. So just work with that for now. If like support holds, it's okay. Support doesn't hold, obviously, then you're going to have to make a different decision. Okay, let's take a look at sand. Okay, sand trading pretty good today versus everything else. All right, so here's how I would do sand. This is the sand daily chart, right? Okay, so on the sand daily chart, it looks like the 200 day moving average and a big fib support level is basically at three. So if you wanted to just kind of let this go and try to get a good project at a good entry point, that's kind of what I would do. Right. You've got sand pretty much well below the sort of alligator moving average system. So you might have to tolerate three, right? I don't know what's going to happen over the weekend. And as I told you, really equities are going to dictate what happens here, but it's pretty clear. Nobody has any real interest in selling the metaverse. Now, if the metaverse gets caught in a vortex, three would be the level to look at. Okay. Let's look at UOS. Okay, UOS. So you got this really big rally, right? And it looks like they tried to take it up and it didn't make it. Let's see if I can get a little bit creative with this trend line. Okay, almost there. All right. So you know, there's nothing more awful than a false breakout. Now you could have a false breakout here, right? So that's not looking good. Obviously nothing's looking good right now, right? Somebody gave me a hard time, uh, in the comments yesterday about this. So, you know, on an up day, everything looks great on a down day. Everything looks terrible. I get it. But if I, if I was in UOS, right, I would say, all right, there's some, there's a decent chance that anywhere between 107 and 112 holds. Because there are a bunch of moving averages down there. And it, if those levels hold, then UOS is okay. If those levels don't hold, then these squat bars, which can, you know, which can signal tops, have basically signaled a top. Okay, I'm still getting up to speed on squat bars. We are literally learning it together. Okay, let's take a look at API 3. Oh, shit. look at that. Okay. See if I can get a deeper history on that. Almost there. API 3. Let's take a look at KuCoin. Okay. All right. So the last time we looked at this, I wrote the word green here. <laughs> so I guess that's good, right? It's clearly above its 200 day moving average. Uh, let's see if I can go to a weekly chart and see where resistance is. So this is API three weekly. Okay. So when you have stuff like this, that's just this like giant green, amazing. Oh my God. Uh, you know, you can do one of two things. 
you can say, all right, if there's a serious fundamental catalyst here, there's no reason to get off this train at the moment, right? The no reason to get off the train, kind of funny with the squat bar, right? Sometimes they can trigger bottoms. You know, yesterday was a horrible candle for API 3, then it turns around and goes up. You don't see that that often. So, you know, if you like it, you can keep it, move the stop up, right? Now, if you're just a trader and you're like, okay, uh, it's going to 100x, better ask yourself, you know, does the story that came out today warrant that type of action? You know, like it was, it was, you were, you were a genius or you thought you were when AVAX was up at 95 and 96 and 97, right? Because Avalanche was outperforming and we love Avalanche, right? But, you know, you, you, you thought you were a genius when it was at a hundred, right? It was outperforming everything. And then it turned around and went to 84. So just remember that when it comes to API three, all right, let's look at Binance. Somebody wanted me to look at BNB. Okay, let's try an eight hour chart for variety. Okay, so here's the deal with stuff like this. You know, this kind of reflects what, what we're hoping for. We're hoping for some kind of bounce into the close, right? That's what we want. We don't want equities to fall apart. Although, you know, they are an accident going someplace to happen. But for the moment, you know, Binance coin is holding. Now, I don't know if you're watching this video on Monday, you know, who knows if that's going to be true or not. This is the eight hour chart of BNB. Okay, so support is holding in Binance, right? This sort of lends credence to the fact that, you know, I don't know, you got to hope for some recovery late in the day on Friday after this is recording. Because if this turns around and falls apart again, it's a mess. But for the moment, right this second, it's holding. Okay. Village Cooking says BNB will always pull through in the end. CC pays himself in BNB only, so they say. So he will support the token as much as possible. All right. Oh my God. Taz wants me to look at Litecoin. So this is what happens when you get caught in something that's really speculative, right? I mean, it looked like it was going to the moon right here and then it breaks down and then it tries to rally today and it gets hit again. Okay. Somebody's asking for Rose and Axia, right? I'm going to do Rose. All right, so this is a coin that we fundamentally like, okay? The 200-day moving average is at 27 cents. Okay, so that's where you're going to be looking for support point in, in that pattern, okay? Let's take a look at Axia because I know the token metrics indices have liked Axia and it's rallied in the past, okay? Wow, look at this. So in Axia, here's what we got. Uh, I had Fib resistance at $11.20, and the last three bars have been blue. So I guess that means one of two things. Uh, it means Axia is just going to go to the moon and beyond, right? A new trend is starting, or there's resistance at $1.12. 
And people who have made a lot of money in this consider taking part of the money. All right, we have Stacey O'Neill, Riverside, California in the house. All right. Taz says my moon bag of Axia is nice. That's right, right? So if you can, if you had taken profits earlier, you can let your moon bag run. Okay, face hack looking at near, and we've got requests for Polkadot and Elrond. Okay, so near 200 day moving average is at nine and a half. Awful tough, fundamentally speaking, to get negative near as this thing goes down. Like it almost feels like near at nine is in DCA territory. Okay, is in DCA territory. All right. All right. I saw El Elrond come in. All right. So before I pull up this chart, you know, I just had somebody come in with kind of a harsh comment. He says, Bill, your old predictions were horrible. Now, I appreciate intellectual honesty, but let me ask you something. You don't think I know that some of what I've said over to say the last 15 days has been somewhat offsides? Like, yeah, I got the bull call on the recent rally, but I have gotten chopped up here, as have many people. So I'm not making excuses. What I'm doing is I'm changing my methods, right? I'm meditating more. I'm finding new technical indicators. I'm on the phone with the token metrics quant department. Token metrics is not just one guy. It's a company, right? I call people. I say, hey, you know, let's figure this out. I need help. What's wrong with that? I was wrong. How many people on YouTube admit that they're wrong? I got the call wrong, but my attitude is right. So, you know, I appreciate you being honest, but frankly, I don't need that because I know, believe me, I take this seriously. A good technical analyst is defined by his desire to help other people. Okay, back to our show. All right, Elrond, you know, this was a huge FOMO play on the upside. Right. Or I know our AI liked it, I think, before this thing took off. Now, we all know with Elrond that it, it's important to have support from this moving average system. This alligator moving average system seems to be working quite well. So I don't see any disastrous sell signals in Elrond. So from that point of view, it seems okay. Let's look at the eight hour chart. But you know, there's that level at 168. Okay, so when you go to the eight hour, you see this blue bar, which could, I don't know. I mean, you, you don't know. Sometimes it can hint at an end. But I would say with Elrond, you definitely want to see it stay above 168. If Elrond is not above 168, then you basically could have a repeat of what went on over here, okay, in early January, right? This is the eight hour chart. So you want to watch out for history like repeating itself, okay? You want to watch out for history repeating itself. So there's support at 168, you know, and it's it, it's tough to make a prediction when you've got all this wild stuff happening, right? People are going to be watching this video four days from now, but the most important thing you can do is find a support point that seems logical. In Elrond, 168 is logical for a couple reasons. Okay, that's where the last rally started from. And that's where the last big decline started from. So 168 may be equilibrium in Elrond. Okay, I know someone was asking for Polkadot. Pain in Polkadot is real, I'm sure. Although it's kind of unchanged for today. So let's take a look at the daily chart of Polkadot. Okay, so this doesn't look terrible, right? I don't I don't exactly know where support is though. 
Let's look at an eight hour chart to see if we can figure it out. All right, let's go to a different chart system. Now I'm going back to DeMarc stuff. So I basically have all these like new quant tools, right? Speed technical analysis. There's a lot of demand for speed technical analysis. Okay. Okay, here's what I would say in Polkadot, if I've got the right chart up here. I think the best support in Polkadot is like $17.12. So let me just go back, right, $17.99. So if Polkadot gets to $17.12, okay, that's the level that's got to hold. All right, what else do we got? Ben Jay says it's weird to feel safer in AVAX than Bitcoin. Funny you should mention that. Let's pull up the AVAX chart, okay? We talked about this yesterday, right? We talked about 90 being a magnet price, all right? So if there's a reversal in Avalanche, it could go all the way back up to 90, right? I mean, that, this is what you want to see. You want to see equities and crypto bounce. So let's go back to equities to see how that DeMarc sequential thing is doing on the short-term chart. This is nice, right? We can do, we can do stuff live and not be glued to a PowerPoint. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. So there's the nine signal in equities. Now here's how the nine signal works. Okay. The 13 is usually a permanent bottom. A 13 and a nine is good. Now, when you get the nine signal, the key is Will it like follow through? Sometimes when you get a nine, what you do is you get a fake out in the opposite direction and then it can resume. So yay equities for bouncing, but you have to be careful with stocks. Crypto is not the problem. Stocks are the problem. All right, I see somebody asking for Cosmos. So thank God stocks bounced. Okay, let's look at an eight hour chart of Cosmos. Okay, so hard to say at the moment, right? I mean, I think if you were a hodler in Cosmos, I don't think anything is happening here that would make you go, oh, wow, I, I better get out now, okay? But the fact that, you know, it seems like every time Cosmos goes up, there's a seller, right? There's a seller. Now that doesn't mean the end of the world, but if you saw Cosmos go back up to say 2860, that's the level that you can watch and be like, okay, how does Cosmos behave at that level? Does it blow through it? Is it over, right? Are, are we done? Or is it gonna turn around resist that level and go back down. All right. Natty's asking for Gala and Dexter says, I'd be grateful to get some information on XRP. I understand it. Mike Novogratz's group was shipping XRP to an exchange. Okay. For some concerns that it might get sold, but you know what? If you look at the eight hour chart of XRP, I don't know. It doesn't look that bad. Now, it actually looks like a bottom, at least short term. Don't quote me on that. A lot of times when XRP outperforms the rest of the market, like remember I was talking about what happens when Dash went up? Every time Dash goes up, I want to do a pop-up live stream and go, Dash is going up, but I hold off because every time you get the outperformance of Dash, Litecoin, XRP, the market goes down. So right this second, XRP is at support. You know, I don't see a reason to freak out. XRP breaks 75 cents. You have to reevaluate. All right. Somebody's asking for Gala. Let's check that out. I hope you guys like these requests, by the way. I, I don't know if there's anywhere else on, on YouTube 
where you get this type of work. All right, let's take a look at this. So Gala was a very expensive coin, right? Our fundamental analyst, Medi, said, you know, Gala is expensive. So let's, let's take a look at the daily chart. Okay, so Gala has a lot of support around 28 cents or 30 cents. That's the good news. Now let's look at the eight hour chart. All right, so on the eight hour chart, it doesn't look as good. That said, you know, sometimes these wild consolidations that chop everybody up and, you know, everyone's bullish and then everyone's bearish, you know, it could just be a triangular formation. And the big question is for Gala, if you look at the eight hour chart, is the bottom of the triangle going to hold? Right. Is this going to turn around and go back up or, you know, it, is this just a pause before it kind of falls out of bed? A lot of times diagonal formations, traditional technical formations from equities don't work as good in crypto. So if this was a stock, you'd be like, oh, wow, great. It's at the bottom of a triangle. But in crypto, you have to be careful of that, right? Because sometimes it can turn around. I just think you don't want to see Gala below 30 cents. That, that's how I would do it, right? And you definitely don't want a shitty close in any altcoin or equities. Okay, somebody's asking for Decentraland. Okay, let's look at Decentraland on an eight-hour chart. Okay, so Decentraland looks pretty good. Let's get this moving average out of here, right? It's, it, it's hard to tell. Resistance is at 301. So I think for Decentraland to be good, it's got to get above 301. Let's go back to the other system because I know that in the metaverse, I was tracking Decentraland. Let's see if I still am. Okay, so this is Sandbox, just as an aside, because I know people were asking for Sandbox. Looks like there's actually great support on the four hour chart at 360. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go to the four hour chart in Decentraland to see if we've got, a, uh, we've got the same picture. Uh, the good support in Decentraland is at 275. And there's not much to tell you on the daily chart. So it looks like Sandbox hit support because Sandbox got hammered. Decentraland doesn't look good or bad, actually. The central land does have support, excuse me, at 296. So we're seeing this theme, right? Elrond, Sandbox, the central land, there's support down here. And as you watch this video, as the later in the day unfolds, will this support hold? Right? Crypto obviously is another but go down for two days. So it may be logical that there's a bounce. Okay. The question is, if there is no bounce, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay. VRA. I know we've got a lot of VRA fans out there. Okay. Take a look at VRA. Okay. So this is the eight hour chart. All right. With this. You know, this is the part of, of, of down moves where you're like, oh, you know, it's like, how, how can you be like overly negative? Tough to get overly negative unless you get a serious break of support. But for the moment, it looks like support and VRA is holding. I guess the level here on the eight hour chart is 0.025. Wow, we got a lot of people coming in here. Let's do IOTA.
Okay, so when you, when you look at IOTA, right, you ask yourself, well, you know, what's really happened over the last couple of days? Really, IOTA has just wound up back where it was at the end of January. Okay, this is on the eight-hour chart. But you would have to see all these people up here get hosed before you could say, all right, there's something really bad going on with IOTA. That, that's how I would do it. Hi, welcome, Maryland. Okay, request for Luna and Dogecoin. Okay, Luna is up on the day. That's interesting. People may be discovering that as a stablecoin play. All right, let's go to the other system and take a little risk. Let's see if I can plug in Luna in here. Let's see if there's any sign that Luna could be reversing. It takes a second to come up. Okay, so that looks like the four-hour chart of Luna. Okay, so in Luna, you've got the double nine bottom on the four-hour chart, right? So hopefully you can see this. Here's the double nines in the bottom right-hand corner, and you had double nines up at the top at 57. So there's like, like you know, if there was a legit positive crypto chart, it might be Luna. And one thing you have to be careful of, you probably want Luna to get back above 52, but Luna is going to try to make, is, is going to try to make a bottom probably. Okay. Somebody asking for Phantom. Hello. What about Cardano, sir? All right. So we have Cardano. Okay, so like a lot of layer ones, this does not look as good, right? You know, you, you got a pretty heavy, serious breakdown here, right? And Cardano support is tough to find. You know, the thing with Cardano is this. I, I don't think anybody wants to sell Cardano below a dollar. Seems like everybody was willing to get out, but no, no one wants to sell it below a dollar unless they get forced to because of equities. Okay, I see Solana. Okay, this is the eight-hour chart on Solana. Pretty much that's going to be the same read across the board. Let's see if I can tell you something that you don't know in Solana. You know, the big question in Solana is why didn't Solana rally when AVAX was rallying, right? In other words, is, is AVAX going to turn into a one coin market? So on the four hour chart of Solana, right, you have the nine bottom, okay? Just like you had the nine top. So that doesn't mean Solana can't puke out on Monday, what it probably means is there's going to be a relief rally in Solana and an avalanche. The thing you have to ask yourself is, will the rally hold? There's nothing worse in bear markets than failed rallies. I got caught on the 15th. So did Mike Novogratz sort of on Twitter, right? We got caught. We're like, oh, okay, this is turning around. And then the all exchange index on tokenmetrics.com goes to cash, all right? Natty's looking for Algorand. Okay, so a lot of these eight-hour charts look very similar. Oh, that's VeChain. I know people like VeChain, so I might as well do that while I have it up here. All right, so it, it's possible... If the market stops going down, a bottom in V-chain is theoretically possible 
based on this little blue bar. Okay. I think you'd want to see the market go higher first before you got too excited. But I don't think you have to freak out if equities are positive. All right. Let's look at Algorand. Actually, let's do Tornado Cash first. Wow. Okay. Privacy going to the moon. Okay. That probably has something to do with the geopolitical situation or there's a catalyst. I don't know, folks. It's pretty tough to get in the way of something that has a positive narrative. The only thing you may run into is bag holders because it's gone from 20 to 50 in a day. You know, so the biggest problem with tornado cash, the trend is definitely your friend, right? Let's go to the weekly, see what the weekly looks like. Okay. So there's the little dot from the Williams indicator. Okay. Doesn't, doesn't tell you a whole bunch except that, you know, there was a bottom signal a bunch of days ago. I don't know. Again, here is resistance, right? So it's spiked up here three times. So maybe if you're a bag holder in this, you can acknowledge that people are trying to get out at 50. Okay. Let me just label this for the video. So people know what we're looking at. Okay. I mean, I, I think in a market like this, if the market hands you a one X, sometimes I think you should, you know, think about taking the one X. Neo up 10% today. Okay. Let's look at the eight hour. All right. So he, here's, here's how this looks. So you've had Neo fail around 25, three times, right? And this seems like a pretty clear head and shoulders bottom. So if I was holding Neo and I had already put up with all the negativity and all these declines and the huge give up trade to 16, uh, you know, not investment advice, but I might be inclined to hold on, right? In other words, if it goes back below 24 or even say 22, okay, then maybe you puke it out. But if you've been holding this, you know, Give it a chance, particularly if, you know, you see things like avalanche going green. All right. Ben J says for fun, let's check out XMR. Okay. So, you know, Monero doesn't look as good. Monero actually kind of looks like people are giving up on it because it's below this huge moving average cluster. I heard somebody say Zcash was going to come back on Twitter. Okay, that, that looks kind of just as bad, right? Because you're below that whole moving average cluster. Let's see what the eight-hour chart looks like. So it looks like, I don't know, it looks like there's something going on where Tornado cash is like, I don't know, eating the lunch of the bigger privacy coins. All right. So let's, let's take one last look at where Bitcoin and Ethereum are before we sign off. Okay. So that's Bitcoin on the daily chart. Getting close to that 13 bottom. The only question is, you know, are you going to get the big puke next week? Okay, Bitcoin on the 240 minute chart, right? Some decent support at 40K. So 40K is holding up and there's a nine bottom here. I mean, there was a nine top at 45 and now there's a nine bottom near 39. 
So even if Bitcoin winds up going much lower because of stocks later, at least for the moment on Friday, as we end the stream, at least we can end it on somewhat of a positive note. It's the same thing in Ethereum, right? You've got this nine bottom. So let's hope that Ethereum can turn around and recover. So let's sum up what we did today. We looked at the possibility of lower crypto prices over the next six months, right? Sell in May and go away. We looked at the short-term picture in oil, right? To give you an indicator of what's going on with the whole Russia war fear trade. We also looked at equities and highlighted that stocks are the biggest risk to crypto, right? Crypto goes down because I think people use it as a hedge because they're afraid about equities. So I don't think there's a reason to get down on crypto, right? I just think people beat crypto up because they're afraid about equities. And if there's like a, a, a problem with higher interest rates and war, I think that's probably a March phenomenon. So you probably got two crappy days, like on the 20th or the 23rd, and then it might be the bounce right near the end of the month. So as we sign off, I want to thank you. I appreciate you viewing. Please give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Did all the requests I could do today. All right, so that's it. This is your host, Bill Noble. I will see you on Monday. Actually, I don't think we will because President's Day. So okay. there might not be a stream. So let me, let, let, let me correct that. So on Monday, there actually may not be a stream because Tokenmetrics is off that day, All right? So make sure you... Take notes from this video if you made it all the way to the end, right? Okay. Now, on that note, I have one final thing. Sometimes this market has done weird stuff around U.S. holidays. Okay. I've seen it at Christmas, Easter, right? Memorial Day, right? There's a saying in equities, never go long into a long weekend. Okay. Now, I don't know if that applies to crypto, but again, be very cognizant of what happens, right? If equities don't do well in the next hour, right? So you got to have to live with this video for three days. So be mindful of risk management. Support at 39 and 34K in Bitcoin. Keep those levels in mind. This is Bill Noble. I will see you next time. Thank you.